This video is part of my personal sketchbook challenge, which is to actually fill a whole watercolor sketchbook. Now, obviously, I don't need to do watercolor on every page. You can do mixed media, you can do um, just drawing, sketching, uh, pen and ink, whatever you want, or, you know, ink and wash. And I haven't made a decision about any of that. But today I'm going to do a watercolor. I have considered doing ink and wash and I think I'm going to stick with watercolor for now. Well, this, the interesting thing about ink and wash, which is ink and watercolor, you can do the ink first and then add the watercolor, or you can do the watercolor first and then add the ink. So I'm going to start with the watercolor and see if I like it, and add ink if I want to. I've already sketched out this little scene. I would recommend using, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm not great at just picturing something in my head unless I'm just really into it and just drawing it. I prefer to look at something and reproduce it in a drawing. So for this one, I used a sticker. I ordered some of these little stickers with doorways and windows and things because that's the kind of thing I actually really like to paint. And I thought, well, you know what? I'm just going to use this. Now, I'm not going to use do it exactly the same. I want to change some colors, and I've already changed some of the drawing and everything. But I drew it out in pencil. And I could just leave it like that because it, you can easily use watercolor over pencil and it has a certain charm when you can see the pencil lines. But I'm going to take my beat up old kneaded eraser and just lighten some of those lines a bit. I actually need a new one of these eraser, erasers. I don't have a lot of choices in art stores where I live. and. I just haven't got around to getting one. So this isn't going to take too much off. I just want them to be a little less obvious so that when the paint comes along you see the color more than the pencil lines. So if you're wondering about my arm, my wrist, uh, what happened is I have no idea. It just, my, this joint at the top of my thumb started to hurt a couple of days ago and then it started to really hurt. It's so painful. I, I actually have no idea what's wrong with it. Um, I, I can't remember actually doing any, anything to it that would cause it to do that. It just sort of came on and for n no apparent reason to me. Um, so if you've got any ideas if that's ever happened to you, Please let me know. Okay, I think that's good enough. Now one thing I can do with this is just do uh, the whole the background or the, the wall. So the thing about watercolor is that you you paint back to front usually unless you want everything to be kind of separate from each other which is another look that is really nice and you can paint in layers for sure but you kind of have to decide, am I going to paint in layers, starting with the light and moving towards the dark? Or do I want to just paint everything separately? And it depends on the look you want. I kind of like the, the look where everything is painted a bit separately, because I like the white space so, showing through. In this one, I'm only going to put a bit of background around here and on the foreground. So to start with that I am using this brush which is a size 12 water media brush from somewhere sometime and um, I also need my little this little thing so I'll make sure there's no color in my brush which it's a good thing because there is some color in there I thought so it kind of looked like there was color in there. Some colors are hard to get out and sometimes I just work quickly and don't get them out. So so I'm not going to leave this here because I don't want you looking at that and thinking, well, it's not the same because it's not going to be the same. Okay. Now the background that I want, I want something, I'm going to paint this door blue because I, I kind of have a thing for blue doors. And, and what I want to do is instead of swatching my my paint color here. I'm going to do it around just around the edge because I kind of like that look and this is a sketchbook. So I can mix them up on my palette over here which I'll show you. 
my camera space isn't big enough. But this is what I'll be mixing colors on. So I can mix them up here using whatever's kind of left over here if I want. Isn't that beautiful? What a pretty color. And, and and then try them here. Like, do I want that as the background color? Uh, not really. Okay, so I might want to mix something else into it, such as oh, I gotta turn this around. I usually work at it in this order. Um, this is Jean Brion, which just means brilliant yellow. That's nice. That's kind of it made it kind of gray. This by the way is not even remotely brilliant yellow. So but the thing is about both of these colors is that they're they're kind of more opaque and I want something that is really transparent. So I'm going to not use either of those. The these are Kiritaki. Again, I can't remember. Gansai Tombi. Yeah, that's, I think that's what it is. I, I put a link below for these paints. And um, this is my big bunch, which I only recently got. Ouch. What I find with this hand is that I can use my fingers, but any kind of pressure on my thumb is like a big ow. Okay, let's go with sort of a yellowish. And you know what? I'm going to mix some of that purple into it. So it's kind of gray. Well, that went kind of green. Do I like that? Not so much. I want it more pink. Okay. Okay, having done that, I'm going to go at it the other way. Because just, um, just the act of, of kind of looking at background colors makes me think I don't want to do it this way so I'm going to instead start from the front and move back so by that I mean I'm starting from the, the colors closest to me and moving towards the background I'm trying to use bigger brushes but I think that one is just going to be clumsy so I'll use this one instead this one is a size eight. It's a little bit, a little bit less unwieldy. So for these pots by the front here, they to me they say hydrangeas. And one thing I need to keep in mind with my little picture here is the direction of the light, and it's coming from this way, and you can tell by the shadows here. So that means I'll want to have lighter colors over on this side and the darker ones over there. So I'm seeing this as as hydrangeas when they have sort of that mixture of pink and, and lavender and not quite blue. So to get a, a blue, um, let me see, I'll use this one here, a little bit of this one. I want that color because they're actually quite beautiful when they're this kind of mixture. One thing you have to remember is that you have to let these dry if you're going to use this method of painting um, around instead of painting over. I'm going to call it that. Then you have to use this method of making sure you let things dry because if you don't you're going to get the paint blooming into whatever's next to it. Now I, what I can do too is when I I can come back into this after it's completely dry and I can <clears throat> I can add more color to it and instead of doing the green here I'm going to do the green up the, up the wall here. because it's not so close to what's already painted. Another way you can do this is start from the top and move towards you. 
which is great if you if you're doing fine work and you don't want to put your hand in it you know I don't want to put my hand in it but I'm just going to be careful here because I can put my hand over to the side this is just a little climbing vine a little too much paint versus water here as I've mentioned before the more intense you want it the more paint versus water and vice versa so if I want it paler or with less value that is less lightness I will um, use more water less paint might as well do this one at the same time however I want a little bit more of this color so this little vine is like not quite as as um, developed as its mate across the doorway there all right I am going to paint these pots now because there's nothing else quite around them and I want all this to dry. I think these pots are going to be sort of a dark terracotta. Let's see. Uh, yes, just with more water. I'm going to be painting the leaves here. So I could actually have left this until. Now one thing I could do here is I could put the shading in which is going to be along the sides here. I could put that in now but it's a little harder to control than if you do it wet and dry. So this would be wet, this is wet and wet. Well it's wet on dry actually but if I were to paint into the wet it would be wet and wet. These aren't necessarily meant to be perfectly symmetrical. Okay, now one problem that I have already is I want to start painting the doors, but everything around here is wet. So I'm just going to dry it quickly. So what I want to find now is a suitable color. Now this is turquoise. I think that's a little brighter than I want. Maybe I'll go with this Prussian blue. Yeah, but not too not too intense. And I think I won't do the window sills until after. And I can put them in a little bit darker or a little bit lighter. Same with this um, dory, do barrier door thing. I don't know what you call that, where it kind of overlaps. We don't have that very much here in North America, but in Europe, in the older homes and buildings, there's a sort of a lip on one door that closes the gap. I guess it's probably to keep the cold out, since when a lot of those buildings were built, it was um, central heating didn't exist, which made them pretty cold. I remember going to England once many years ago and visiting friends of my mother's. They had been pen pals for decades. So my cousin and I went to England and called on these people. Who were, she was like lovely, very gracious. But it was November and wet and cold and we just froze. And we'd come from living on the prairies in Canada where the air is very dry especially in the winter and you have forced air heating which is a thermos blows hot air I mean did I say thermos the fur paint and talk at the same time okay the furnace blows hot air which of course dries everything out including your hair and your skin and everything so we stayed with this couple and their daughter and we couldn't believe that the sheets felt damp. That was hard to get used to. But in the evenings, um, they just like they were they were tough, according to us, because we were not used to that damp cold at all. We were watching TV with them one evening, and we had asked if they could possibly turn on their little space heater. And it was belting out heat until we were finally feeling warm which took quite a while. And their daughter came in from being having been out somewhere. 
She opened the door and walked in and went, whoa, is it ever hot in here? <laughs> and my cousin and I looked at each other and uh, our eyes said, please don't turn me down, please don't. It only just got warm, finally. There's my blue doors. How nice is that? Okay, um, I need to also remember which one I used. These little spaces here need to also be painted because they're not windows. Anyway, hence the need for one of those little closures on the door, like this one has, which is a little little half half circular. I don't even know what you call that thing. Anyway, that was kind of a roundabout way of thinking about that because I don't remember if their house had it. I think their house was more water, modern, but the fact that it was so cold in the house that was not central heated certainly give rise to wanting one. All right, I'm gonna let that little bit dry and I want to get a, a deeper green for the leaves on these flowers. See how I'm not, I'm not letting these touch? And here it was just damp enough that it's starting to pull that green into the brown. So I'm going to just basically absorb it with this little Q-tip. So see how I've got white spaces between everything? That's one of the things I like about it. I like the white to show in watercolor. It's just, I think it's just beautiful. Now I've got this stone around the top here of the door and I need to swatch some of these. This is, um, I would call that a warm gray uh, and it's more of a sandstone color. So let's do this color. Actually, that's really quite nice, but not exactly what I want. And what I do want is something with a bit more yellow in it. So I'm going to turn this around so that I've got a little clear spot over here. Gather up a bunch of this. And mix it with some of this Naples yellow. Look what happens. So the question is, is that enough paint? Because sometimes if you don't mix enough when you start, you run out and then the re resulting additional mix uh, doesn't look the same. Now this is pretty, pretty finicky painting. But it has its, its um, advantages, has its pluses. That is, if you like finicky painting, if you like precision, if you like the look of it uh, that makes it worth the fact that it's kind of slow, then by all means, it's worth it. All right, I'm going to dry this so that I don't keep having problems. One advantage of painting little, little vignettes like this is that don't warp the paper that much. Okay. Um, this is my blue. I can't use this brush, it's too big. If you're going to be really aiming for accuracy, you need to work with fine brushes. Now, I want more color than that. So let's get it. That's all dry.
it's just a nice little watercolor sketch. It's a good kind of thing for developing your skills, uh, playing with paint and color and mixing colors and using wet and wet and wet and dry and just trying different techniques. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel and click the little bell so you get the notifications. If you look in the description, there's lots of information there. You can join my email list where I send out something new every week and have a look at these other videos. And I'll see you next time.